Hi guys and welcome. A quick little snippet, just a tiny little short video to show a particular problem I have encountered on this. This is, this happens to be the second 6138 movement that I'm working on this week and I'm just starting to strip this one. And this as you can see is a brown dial bullhead. I won't be showing a full video on this one because Mike Bolton of my retro watches is doing his Seiko bullhead. So you of course can, uh, can catch the whole ins and outs of that. And of course I have covered the 6138 in my Seiko Kakume video a short while ago. Now you might remember as well, if you saw the 6138 UFO video, that that particular watch had a problem with the hour recording wheel. And I didn't strip and service that particular watch because it was in really, really good condition with the sole exception of this hour recording wheel fault. And the problem with that one was this little lever here which comes up here and bears against this, which is the hammer, this set of levers. You can actually see these in, in better detail and in action in the 6138 UFO video. And you can see the assembly process in the Kakumi video, of course. Uh, but I expected when I stripped this to find that this had broken on this one as well. However, that's not the case. And what appears to have happened, as you can see up here, you've got some signs of corrosion. There's been some, um, some moisture ingress in here in the past through the left hand pusher by the look of it because it's all sort of centered around here and it's clearly gotten under here and caused some problems and what's happened is it is somehow causing the hammer the reset hammer to stick so as you press the reset button you can hear the click and that's the strong hammer return spring on the back or the top of the movement rather and you can see that it's pressing this in. And if you look up close into this window, you can actually see this lever is actuating. I'm gonna scoot in close so you can see that in good detail. So here, up close and personal, you can see if I press this, it pushes that lever in. And if you look at this little round window, through the round window, it's like Jack and Ori, is it Jack and Ori? What was that plate? I can't remember. It was one of those uh, kids things from, from many years ago. Let's see what we can see through the round window. Anyway, um, if you look through this little round window up here, you can see that spring actually actuating against this post on the reset hammer. What it's not doing is moving the reset hammer. So clearly this is corroded and stuck in place somewhere up here. And rather than push on anything here, I'm just gonna pop this plate off so we can take a look. Interestingly as well, I couldn't refit the stem when it had been removed because the, uh, the yoke was stuck in position and the clutch had slipped from its location. The plate is secured by three screws. These screws are accessible with or without the calendar works removed, but obviously during a, um, a service disassembly, the calendar works is going to be removed anyway. So clearly it makes sense to do that. And I'm hoping this screw is not going to prove awkward and is going to come undone. And I think it might be a bit reluctant to do so. Oh, that's a nuisance. Come on now. There you go. There's a good boy. Well done. Yeah, that definitely didn't want to come away. I will have to replace that. So... And you can see, well, hopefully you can see there some flakes of rust. This plate should now just lift away. However, because of the corrosion, I am not 100% convinced it's just going to pop off nice and cleanly. So a little bit of judicious talking to with a, uh, a levering implement might be just what's needed. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, corrosion related stuff going on here. This is stuck, stuck, stuck. Wowzers. There we go. There we go, there we go. Little bit of judicious 
talking to and oh well yes uh, yeah you can see and that is where the problem of this one is that might clean up it's not actually on the face of the hammer or anything I'm gonna scoot in just so you can have a look and there we are up close you can see this is the lever I was mentioning that bears onto, oops, sorry, this is the lever that bears onto this. This one is the one I thought would have been broken, but it's not. This one is a considerable buildup, as you can see, of rust, of corrosion there. And that's why it wasn't moving and doing what it needed to do. And you can see also where it's effectively welded itself with rust to the cover plate. So good bit of cleaning needed on both of those hopefully that will be reusable if not I will just need to um, replace it but that was just a quick short snippet on the 6138 and um, and yet another cause of a sticking minute uh, hour recorder reset and so with that done I'm now going to continue the strip down of this particular watch and uh, I'll be checking for any other areas requiring attention. Thankfully, it looks like it's, it's isolated to just this little area here. Hopefully the corrosion won't be so bad that this is unusable, but uh, we shall see when I clean that up a little. So thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. Okay, one final little bit. Um, there we are with the movement stripped. There's, uh, there's some corrosion and some bits that are going to need a dress and you can see the uh, you can see the setting lever there and the back uh, the top sides generally pretty good it's not bad it's not bad uh, but <laughs> just just last little bit last little last little grumble that my bugbear with Seiko as much as I enjoy Seiko my real bugbear with Seiko is this right this this was a piece of clean Rodico uh, just rodicoing the pivots, the pivot points of the barrel before opening it. This is my clean finger cots after opening it and taking out the spring and just wiping across the spring. And that is the insides of the barrel and the barrel arbor, which I've not even cleaned yet. And little known fact, this, this stuff here, this comes from, from um, uh, a very little known uh, merger with Toyota and Seiko many, many years ago. And what happened was Toyota had to scrape all of their old axle grease out and put it into containers to be disposed of. But the cost of disposing was so expensive the, the head people looked at it, puzzled over it for weeks until somebody at Seiko said, Let's stick it in some tubs and relabel it Seiko S2. That'll do. Thumbs up. Nice one. Uh, so yeah, that's my little gripe about Seiko. Uh, Seiko Green. Oh, it's horrible stuff. Hate it. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.